Greetings, Trarians, Chaos here. Before I get started on the tutorial, I just wanted to say at the time of recording, the channel has hit 500 subscribers. I am very excited and I just wanted to thank each and every one of you for supporting me as I grow the YouTube channel and for sticking around and watching my videos. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much. Now let's make it to a thousand. As you all might have guessed from the little cutscene at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be covering a combination lock of my own design today. Hello, Falling Star. So I'll just give you a little example of it right now. We have here our combination. So if we just plug that in, oops. You'll see the confetti cannon has fired indicating that the signal has gone through and the lock is unlocked. If I press it again, the signal will travel through again. If I press any digit and it will lock the cannon fired again because it received a second signal as the combination locked locked. And as you see down here in the text, it indicates that it has been locked. And as you see, if I just press random numbers, in any order we won't get the lock to just randomly open unless i happen to press the combination exactly so with that out of the way let's go ahead and take a look into how this thing is built the keypad is the most basic component of the combination lock it is where you send your input signals for the lock to determine whether or not you're giving it the incorrect or correct password. I am using the three by three nine digit combination lock. This will be the one position to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. You do not need to use this design. Your keypad can be any number of numbers uh, or any pattern or design that you want it to be. Keep in mind the more numbers that you have, the harder to guess your combination will become. So the first thing that I need to do is wire up these switches. And then red on five, but it needs to come out to the side. As you can see, five is kind of stuck, sandwiched in the middle, it has nowhere to go. No matter what I do, it's going to cross another switch. But for now, we're gonna leave it like that. I'll go over how to rectify that later. Now we can just group these wires up. And I will group this yellow wire in with the red and blue over here. And now we have three different segments of wire colors, two of them with red, blue, and green, and one of them with uh, yellow, red, and blue. So I'm just going to run these wires down and underneath the ground, as you can see here with the completed lock and up and around to the other side just so that it doesn't get in the way of anything that we are trying to build in terms of the combination lock. And here we have this red segment, which is also part of the keypad area, within which we will need to be placing some logic gates, one for each number on the keypad, so in this example, that's a total of nine with a little bit of space in between each one, just like that. And on top of them, all of the lamps will be off. Now we need to run the wires through them. But before I do that, I'm going to place another row 
of logic gates right down here except the number five position which is right in the middle here will actually not be an AND gate it's going to be an XOR gate now remember when I talked about five being in the middle here and that red wire actually passes through six so you see if you were to pull the sixth uh, switch it'll actually activate both the red and the blue wire this XOR gate will help you determine whether or not you're trying to activate the sixth position or the fifth position if you'll recall from a previous tutorial whenever you use an XOR gate on the lamps if one lamp is on but only one lamp is on the XOR gate will send a signal if more than one lamp are on it will not do anything at all so you'll see uh, once we hook up all the wires here we'll have the red wire from the number five position going into the top lamp and we'll have the blue wire from the number six position going into the bottom lamp now when you pull the sixth position wire it will activate the red and the blue lines turning on both of these lamps and so it'll only activate the number six spot it won't activate five and six when you pull the five switch only the red line will activate only one lamp will turn on and only the number five position will become active so now i'm just going to wire up all of these three groups of lines into the logic gates Now you may notice that I'm running the group of wire all of the way through this logic gate, both through the gate itself as well as the lamp before coming off to the other side down here. And the reason for that is whenever you send a wire signal entirely through a logic gate, it goes into an infinite loop. And when it goes through an infinite loop, it actually stops itself almost immediately and creates a puff of smoke just like that what you're seeing here and what it does is it quickly turns on and off the switch but it only sends one signal so instead of sending two signals with a rapid on off it just does just does one pulse a real quick pulse and sends the signal without actually turning on the gate and that's precisely what we need here and I run the wire all the way through to the second gate to ensure that this one also turns off now you're probably wondering why do we want it to just send a single pulse well that's because I like to line the bottom of my keypad input with signs announcement boxes specifically which will indicate which number you are currently using on the keypad now if i were to not have the uh, pulsers set up if it didn't send just a single signal if it sent two each sign would be activated twice that's precisely why i set it up in this way so that we only get each sign making an announcement once So if we hook up the logic gates to the signs beneath them, just like this, whenever we input a signal on the keypad, a number will be sent through. Now this fourth position, since it's a yellow wire, we can't use a yellow wire here. Otherwise it'll just muddle things up and you'll get the sign announcing twice. So we just need to pick a different color there. Now you'll see if we go to the bottom, every time we input a number, we will get the corresponding number outputted as text in the lower left hand corner of the screen and that is the keypad done now we'll move on to the next segment of the lock
The decoder, which is represented by this green box over here, is the part of the lock where the code, the combination, is stored, where you program it into the lock. The decoder receives an input directly from the keypad, which sends a signal through the decoder, which indicates whether or not the correct code has been entered. And then the decoder will send an output signal onwards. To get the decoder started, we just need to create a row of faulty logic gates, which will act as the bridge between the keypad and the decoder itself. So anytime a number is pressed on the keypad, it'll just send a signal out of the corresponding uh, logic gate from one to nine at the very end over here. Beneath that, we are going to place a row of AND gates with OFF lamps directly on top of them. And then beneath that and off to the side, we're going to place a row of FAULTY gates. Now this will be the first cell or digit of our decoder right here. So the way that this works is a, no a signal will come in from the keypad and trigger this, which will activate this AND gate. The AND gate just serves as kind of a synchronizer for every row within the combination. The code is actually just stored on these rows of faulty gates right here. So right now you can see we only have one row of faulty gates at this segment which means our decoder will only have one digit in the code. Obviously, a one digit passcode is extremely easy to guess. You have one through nine, you could figure it out. So we need to extend that. In order to extend that, we need to place a row of AND gates next to a row of faulty gates for the number of digits that we would like to have in our combination. And I'm gonna go ahead and place all of those right now. Okay, so you see here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven combinations in our code now. Way, way more secure than it used to be. So to wire this up, we need to run a, I'm gonna grab red, run a red wire all the way through from the input faulty logic gate all the way down to the last AND logic gate. Now the reason why you need to go through every single one of these AND logic gates is because we want them to fire at the exact same time. Uh, for instance, if I had just placed one there, like that, and had a blue one like this, and then I just alternated it, oops, let me get rid of that, and just alternated it like this, then they don't fire at the exact same time. It might visually look like it, but there's a microsecond delay between each one of these activating, which is not what we're after. These, every single row activates at the precise same time, which needs to happen. Otherwise the lock will reset itself every time you press the keypad and you'll never be able to progress the combination. Once those are done, what we need to do is hook up these AND gates with the faulty logic gates that are right next to them, immediately to the right. And we're gonna do that with blue wire and green wire alternating. The reason why they have to alternate is because I can't put a blue wire here and then another blue wire here. It would link these two rows, which is not what we're after. We need these rows to be completely separate. Now that those are wired up, every single time that we send a signal through the keypad, if I press number one, 
it'll activate the corresponding row at the exact same time and activate each one of these columns within the decoder. Now, the next step of the decoder is to actually indicate what is the code for the lock. So you see here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Using my green wire here, I'm going to select what code that I want for the combination lock. So I'm gonna want the combination to be, uh, let's say nine. So I'll put a wire at the ninth position on the first row. The next combination, the number in the combination, let's say one. So I'll put a one uh, wire at the one position. And then let's just do two, uh, let's do eight, and let's do another eight, just so we could show you that the repeat numbers are an option. Uh, let's do six, and then at the very end, let's have four. Now we have nine, position one, two, eight, eight, six, four will be the combination for our lock. And we could just run these green wires straight out to the right, just like this. You can do any combination that you want. Just make sure that you only have one digit per row. Otherwise things will get confused. The, the lock will possibly break. You can only have one correct code per row in your decoder but it can be whatever you want it to be. And now with all of these extra logic gates, we're just going to leave them empty for right now. We'll worry about them in a little bit, but we're gonna move on to the next segment of the lock. The latch, which will be represented in this purple box, is the part of the combination lock that actually makes sure that the combination is being entered in the correct order. It will wait for the correct signal, the first digit to be sent. And once it's sent, it will proceed to the next part of the latch and it will wait for the second signal to be sent, the correct number two position. And then once that's reached, it'll wait for the third etc etc until it reaches the very bottom and that is where it will send an output signal once the very very last digit has been entered so to build the decoder we just need to do two rows of faulty gates and we're going to have one for each row of the decoder that we have here the very very top one needs to be on but all the other ones have to be off. Also, I found it helpful if you alternate which side the logic gates are on just to keep things nice and clean. So we're gonna go ahead and just place these logic gates right now and I'll get back to you in a little bit. Okay, so now you see our, our latch has one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven positions to correspond with the seven digits within our decoder. And now we can just extend the green lines from our decoder straight out into the latch so that whenever the decoder receives a correct signal from the keypad, for example, with the first one, if I press nine, this will light up and activate and it will trigger the latch. Now what we need to do is progress the latch downwards each time the correct signal has been input. In order to do that, we're just going to be alternating red and blue wires. And this is similar to what we've done in the past with wire progression logic gates in uh, previous tutorials. So I'm just going to go ahead and hook up all of these logic gates within the latch. Now this very, very last red wire here, I'm going to run down to the ground a little bit underneath 
and right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to be our output signal. Whenever the latch has been activated, it will fire this confetti cannon, indicating that the lock has been unlocked. So now you'll see if I press the number nine, the latch will move into the second uh, position because number nine was the first digit on our keypad. Then we have number one. If I press number one, it moves on to the next position in the latch. But you'll see if I start inputting random numbers, eventually the latch will progress every single time that I hit a correct number in the combination and it eventually will open. Even though I didn't necessarily hit all of the numbers in the correct order, I have a bunch of clutter in between each digit that the latch is not recognizing. And that's where the next part of the lock will come into play. So how do we keep the latch from progressing whenever we're throwing clutter in between each digit? That is the reset line, which is represented by this yellow box. Simply, we just need to put some logic gates next to where we have other logic gates. So for example, we'll put a faulty logic gate there and we'll do the same next to each one of these in the latch. And all of these need to be in the off position. Just like that. And now we hook up the latch directly to the reset line. So if we take this red line here and connect it to the reset line, whenever the first digit in the latch is activated, it'll turn on this lamp, the second row in the latch, and it'll turn on the first row within the reset. If the reset is triggered, it will return these two lamps to their original state right at the beginning, so they'll be off. And again, if we do the same thing with the next row and just connect this blue line to the uh, reset, then when we progress from here to here, we'll hit the second digit correct. It'll turn on this lamp, it'll turn on this lamp, and if we reset it, it'll return these to their original position. So all we need to do is connect the latch to the reset line right next to it, just like this. And we also need to do it right here at the very end. Now I said this line is the output, and it is, but the output needs a reset as well if you plan for your lock to close itself when the in, uh, the incorrect input has been entered. So even though the lock is has been unlocked, it can be relocked by entering an incorrect number. And that's why this ties back into the reset. Now we need to get some wires to actually signal the reset that we want it to happen. And so how we do that is we just run a group of yellow wire all the way down and connect it to each one of these faulty logic gates that are a part of the reset line just like this and we're going to wrap it underneath and run it all the way up to the top row of the decoder just like that and now we could run this out to the very ends as well underneath each segment of the decoder And what we'll need to do is hook up every part of the decoder that isn't a part of the solution. So if it doesn't have this green wire, and I'll just fade everything else out so that we could see a little bit easier. If it has the uh, solution to the code, it doesn't get a yellow wire. But if it doesn't, it needs to get a yellow wire. So that the way this works is every single time you press a number, it's either going to be an incorrect entry for the decoder or a correct one. If it's an incorrect one, then it will send a reset signal through 
the latch and reset the latch to its original position. If it's the correct one, then it'll progress the latch. Now you do see that we have resets in every single row and you might wonder, well, will a reset in the first row cause the mechanism to reset if I'm moving on to the second digit in the code? And the answer is no, it won't cause a reset, kind of. So if I press the correct digit, nine, you'll see that the first set of gates light up. And if I press the incorrect digit, you'll see that they reset. Now if I press nine, and then I press one, which are the first two digits in our combination, you'll see that these do reset because when we go through here and we press nine, it's the correct one and it progresses the logic, uh, the latch. And if we press one, it's the correct symbol or uh, the correct signal and it progresses the latch down here, but it's also the incorrect signal up here. So it resets the latch up above. Don't worry about that. That's not going to be a problem, but now you'll see that no matter what I press, it will only progress the code if I do the correct input. For example, I'll just type in one, or uh, nine, one, two, eight, eight. And you can see that the latch has progressed all the way down to here. Six, and then finally four. The confetti gun fires, indicating that the latch has been completely unlocked. Everything's open and good to go. If I press an incorrect number, it'll fire again, indicating that an output signal has been sent. The lock has been locked. And again, I can press anything that I want now as quickly as I want. And I will never be able to just randomly guess the combination now. And that is the lock completely done. It was a long video. Hopefully you guys found it useful. If you have any sort of questions regarding this lock, I'd be happy to answer them. Just be sure to leave a comment below. I'll also be leaving a link in the description below to the world containing this lock design in its separated segments, exactly as I built it for the tutorial. So if you'd like to give it a look in game yourself, feel free to check it out. If you liked the tutorial, if you found it useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Happy building. <laughs>